When we think of the New Testament church, the first person that comes to mind is the Apostle Paul. That, of course, was not always his name. Before he was Paul, he was a Pharisee and a murderous persecutor named Saul. When God changed his heart through a vision, Saul felt it was also necessary to change his name. May I help you? I'd like to see the clerk, please. Business? I have a couple changes on my census form. Uh, name? Saul from Tarsus. Okay, I'll pull your file. Have a seat and the clerk will be right with you. Uh, Mr. Saul from Tarsus? That's me. So, what can I do for you today? I'd like to officially change my name. Your name? All right. I'm, not, I'm gonna need to go over your bio just for the record. Let's see. It says here you're a Pharisee, tent maker, and... Huh. Religious persecutor? Well, I've recently changed jobs. What's your employment status now? Missionary and writer. Yeah, we can get a lot of that. Really? No, not really. Will you still reside in Asia Minor? Asia what? Asia Minor. You know, Turkey, Kurdistan, Northern Iraq. Oh, well, I plan to travel a lot, but I suppose for tax purposes I'll maintain my residence in Asia Minor. Yeah. Many celebrities do that. Very smart. Now, about this name. Yeah, I was thinking I would change my name from Saul to Paul. Saul to Paul. How creative. Well, it wasn't meant to be creative. Reason for change? I'm changing because of a recent bout with blindness. Come again. I was blinded on the road to Damascus by a vision. Say what? I was blinded on the road to Damascus by a vision of Jesus. I may have missed a few steps here, Chief. What I have on this form under reason for name change is marriage, celebrity status, religious conversion, or other. It says nothing about illness. So which one's it going to be? I guess it would fall under religious conversion. Okie doke. Whatever floats your boat, Reverend. And I just noticed on your form that you technically are a Roman citizen. That's right. I'm roaming around a lot. <laughs> Look, buddy, the Romans don't look too kindly on people changing their names, especially on account of religious conversion. You know, Big Brother wants to make sure no one strays too far from the flock. I had no choice. I was on my way to Syria to arrest and beat down a few Christians, see? And this blinding light hits me. Wow, really? Right. I was knocked from my horse, and this voice came out of the light, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Amazing, that happened? So I said, Who are you, Lord? And the voice answers, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. So you passed out from the light and came to, and now you want to change your name? Well, pretty much. God chose me and was gracious enough to open my eyes to a new world and a new person, even though I didn't deserve it. Now that's grace. I hear you, God, amazing grace. I gotta I got tell you, Rome ain't gonna like the name change business. So maybe for ten pieces of silver, I can make all this go away. A bribe? You want me to pay a bribe? I can't believe it. Relax, Pastor Party Pooper. Not so loud. I'll process the paperwork. It'll take two weeks. Feel free to use your new name right away. Call it a, a grace period. <laughs> I'll even throw in a custom engraved ID bracelet with your new name. How's that sound? How about I just sign and be on my way? You're lost, pal. Yes, God worked powerfully on Paul to bring him to faith and give him boldness to do mission work in places across Europe and Asia. As we take a look at the life of Paul this weekend and better understand his amazing transformation, let us never forget that God has changed us when he brought us to faith and give us confidence to share the good news. Through him, we have been made new. We'll learn more this weekend during our catechism event. Be sure to answer this week's question.